Hey guys, how's it going? This is Will Salas with Golden State Gaming Network, bringing you a special video that I shot with my buddy Eric. It's an unboxing video of a new Munchkin game. Hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, how's it going? Will Salas here for, uh, got a special video for you guys. This is going to be an unboxing video with my buddy Eric. He's a demoer, does a lot more shows than I do. He's one of the few, but he's got a special game that hasn't been released yet. He's going to give us a sneak peek. We're going to check this out. It is, well, it's amazing is what it is. It is the guest artist edition of Munchkin. I'm going to let him talk to you a little bit more about that, and we're going to go into it and do the unboxing. So give me two seconds. We're going to go ahead and swap that out. Hey, guys. All right, so this is Eric. This is Beautiful Face. Part in the random camera angles. We are in the Executive Gaming Lounge over at Brokers Hobbies. The new game lounge has been opened, but this is the Executive Super Secret Private Room. We got our own toilet! But Eric's going to go ahead and tell us a little bit more about the game, what he knows about it, and then we're going to get into the unboxing. Alright, so what I've got here is the first of the six guest art editions of Munchkin. This one is done by Ian McGinty of the Munchkin Comics fame. And I'm just going to get right into it. I have not opened this at all. It still has a cellophane wrap on it. It is a complete reskin of the original Munchkin, card for card. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust our camera angle and bring us right in over this because this is going to be something you guys will not want to miss. And what we have here is a nice list of the other yet to come guest artists. This first one should be out in January. So you're not only are you getting the guest artist edition, you're getting the sneak peek at all the other new editions that are going to be coming out. So let me get our camera angle just right, bear with me. Alright. So like the other deluxe editions of Munchkin, it comes with a board to help track your level. Also with new art. We have another Munchkin D6. And a whole new set of standings both male and female. So I'm gonna go ahead and just borrow the standees from you. I'm gonna get a nice close-up of this. This is kinda cool, guys. It's the same colors that you usually get the Munchkin stuff in, but wow. The art is very, very different from the other, the other artwork in the original box, um, <clears throat> in the original deluxe set. But you've got all the colors here, and there's the male and the female. The backs are just double-sided. It's nice punch-out stuff, as uh, Steve Jackson has come to do. So this is good stock, good cardboard. It feels nice and strong, so it'll be pretty good for you for a while. I don't know a lot of people that have had to replace their standees. No, I, I've run through 15 conventions this year, and my sets are still holding up. So what was very fortunate is one of the cards I pulled from the original Munchkin to compare with the new one was right on top. So these are the hireling cards of the original Munchkin Deluxe versus the new one from the Guest Artist Edition. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that for you guys to, to take a nice good look at that. And so these are the side-by-side -side cards. Now which is the original and which is the new one? This is the original done by our very talented artist, John Kavalik. And this is the new one, done by guest artist, Ian McGinty. So I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see that. I'm gonna go ahead and just shove these right in your face. I'm also gonna give them another nice side-by-side -side with the magic missile credits. Which is a personal favorite one shot of mine. I know you guys love the way my hands look. Talk to your manicurist. <laughs> so, and the great chainsaw of bloody dismemberment. What player could this complete without one? So, as you guys can see, um, original card and the new card. And it's kind of kept thematically the same. There's the chainsaw, the same amount of blood. But the artwork is a little bit different, a little bit more fun. It's a little bit more comic bookish than the original. And 
everybody's favorite. The Duck of Doom. Wow. You should have known better than to pick up a duck in a dungeon. So again, original. New. This is really fun. He, he, he did his own thing. You can tell that he specifically kept to his own theme and his own style. But he stayed very true to the game itself. He was still, it's, it's very cool. It's, it's <clears throat> kind of curious. I kind of want to ask him how much freedom he was actually given to run with this and just do his own thing with Steve Jackson and, and, and his company. Cause I know they have a, a strict artistic uh, standard that they like to keep. So it, it'd be nice to find that out. Maybe Eric can dig that out. Eric is probably one of the most prolific volunteers they've got in the Southern California, California area. So, um, He's not as beautiful as I am, but he's more prolific. He gets around more, basically. Well, what can I say? People like me. People like me, too. That hurts. All right, so let's take a look at the box while Eric's working on the punchies, because we're going to do a playthrough video, just a how-to video for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom this back. And we've got the, like most of the new uh, Steve Jackson stuff, there's ads and things and, and promotional stuff on the sides of all the boxes which is more of the traditional artwork and stuff that they keep but it's a fun way to promote themselves and you get something different that you might not have seen before on all the boxes oh this is something i've been meaning to try is munchkin panic um for those of you that have played the regular castle panic or zombie panic it's kind of a similar theme but with a munchkin twist on it so let's go to the back of the box the back of the box actually gives you a glimpse of the artwork and the board with the standees. So that's very cool. There's some information on following them on Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff. Um, love the sound of new cards being shuffled. And not cooperating. It sends chills. <clears throat> For those of you that are curious about the cover art, oops, I just dropped all the things. I am failing to shuffle. It's okay, he's new. So this is the cover art, Munchkin, guest artist edition. I've got a weird glare on here, guys, so, uh, well, too bad. But it's it's kind of, a, oh, there we go, got that, look at that. Oh, we got our Munchkin hero walloping a dude on the head. So, um, it's kind of cool, and it's kind of... <clears throat> so one, one thing I do want to point out with these upcoming guest artist editions, is the Munchkin Food, which was not originally done by John Kavalik. And he will be getting to take his own crack at that one now. So, okay, that's cool, guys. So the house artist, basically, is going to get to be the guest artist. Yes, because that one was done by Greg Hyland, who did Ninja Burger. Which is a fun game. If you have not gotten a chance to play it, I suggest you play that. And also, Something something of note for you, Billy. The guest artist on Munchkin Cthulhu will be Katie Cook, who is the artist on a lot of the My Little Pony comics, which I know you love. Alright, it's it's a well-known fact that I am a closet brony. She's also the, the artist for the Munchkin Love Shark Booster and the new Munchkin Kids. So... <coughs> For those of you that I got, have not gotten into Munchkin because thematically they're all the same or they look traditionally the same to you, this is kind of a cool way to get into it and start collecting your sets again because each one is different and unique unto itself. Are they all going to be the deluxe set or are they all going to be like the other sets where you can just buy the, the smaller box without the boards? Um, all of these, to the best of my knowledge, are going to be deluxe sets with their own boards. Which is kind of awesome because I don't know if for many of you that, that may not have played Munchkin or may have played a couple different games, the boxes are designed to store nicely and put away. So you don't have random sets of tins and, and other stuff. They keep it very consistent and very easy for stores. So it is kind of cool to collect all the sets of Munchkin. They can play well with each other. Um, and they do play well. There's actually people that like to stick every single card that they can from all the sets into one giant box. Which, I don't know if you've ever played that way, but it just, it's not my cup of tea. I will do maybe one, one game of that. 
with all of my original Munchkin set. See, I gotta be during careful the when I say things around Eric, because then he goes and he has to. I might do one during the convention. <clears throat> He's gotta plant his flag in me. So let's see. Okay, we've got the rules. So even the rules are. They're the same Munchkin rules. They tell you how to set it up, the card management, the character creation, that whole thing. But they're done with the new artwork, which is cool because it'd be very, it, it's easy to be lazy when you're doing something like this and to keep generic things from the original sets. That way you don't have to bother paying for extra art or figuring out how to include it. You just, you know, you throw in some rules. But they actually took the time to include the new art in this and Steve Jackson games pretty much does that for all their sets thematically even though the rules are for the most part the same they always take the time to make the entire new version or the new set um, consistent with all of its components let's take a look at this dice guys now I always find munchkin dice to be really funny because <clears throat> some of them I think the weight is off um, people Eric and, and Eric. That's well, because he, he always fails his rolls. <laughs> so, not that time, I would have run away. Only if you're an elf. Oh, uh, that's true. You have five or six. So, um, yeah, that's that's the set, guys. Um, let me get some more of the art out from the cards for you so you can take a look. We're going to do a quick how-to on the play. You know what I love is when it doesn't, the autofocus doesn't autofocus. That's, that's like my favorite thing in the world. So, so the... <clears throat> the Cotion of Confusion, Swiss Army Polearm. I mean, these this, this art is really great, and it's very fun. I don't know, I think for, for some of you guys that have not given much of a chance just based on the fact that, that you think all the games are the same, they're not all the same. Each game, especially when you play with new people, See, I was teaching Eric my tricks there. Okay, guys, so we had some technical difficulties. We went ahead and reset. Eric's going to go ahead and take us over, walk us through a two-round game of Munchkin. So let's go ahead and get the setup phase going. All right, so first you grab pawns and whichever color or gender you want. I've got the purple guy. Billy's got the, the red chick. Lovely hmm. scarlet lady. Each player starts with four cards. Four cards from each deck, right? Four cards from each deck. The door deck will have your races, classes, curses, monsters, and monster enhancers. Now, for people that don't know, what do the numbers on the board signify? Numbers are your level. You are trying to reach coveted level 10 first while stabbing your friends in the back on the way there. There will, of course, be a time and place for cooperation, though that usually requires some negotiation. Munchkin is normally not a two-player game. This is just for this quick playthrough. And I drew Divine Intervention, which has to be played immediately. So I do not have a cleric card in my my hand to be. I don't know if you have one. I do not. So normally you have to be, or you have to kill a monster to reach level 10. However, if Divine Intervention comes up and you're at level nine and you're a cleric, you immediately win the game. If everyone's at level 9 and they're a cleric, you all win the game together. Because the Munchkin Gods decreed it. So that will just go away, nothing will happen with it. I will set my character up here. I'm a dwarf. I too am setting up as a dwarf. I have some one-time use items. The instant wall, which allows automatic escape for me and one other person if I want. A wishing ring, which cancels a curse. And a friendship potion, which allows me to discard all monsters in combat. I don't get any any treasure for it, but I can loot, loot a door on my way out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I got a glass card, so that makes me a thief. So I'm a dwarf and a thief. I'm a thieving dwarf. That sounds like it's racist somehow. It sounds like you. <laughs> Now, I've got also some things that I can equip. I can equip my spiky knees. It gives me a plus one bonus. And it takes no no equipment slot. Nope, it's just a part great. of me. And the tuba of charm, which does take an equipment slot in one hand. And it's big. Normally, you're only allowed to have one big item. Unless you are a dwarf, then you can have any number of big items. 
I also have a bow with ribbons, but it is only usable by elves, so I can't use it. <clears throat> Your normal hand size is five cards, unless you're a dwarf, in which case it's six, but any item that has a gold piece value can just sit down on the board in your backpack. Which I have the cheese grater of peace, but I have to be a cleric to use it, so that's gonna go into my backpack. Additionally, you can also, as long as no one's in combat, sell a thousand gold pieces worth of items to go up a level. These are pretty good items, so I'm not gonna do that at this time. So I have no weapons, and I'm level one, so my combat strength is effectively one. So I'm going to now kick down the door, which you have to do every turn. And I find an unspeakably awful, indescribable horror, which is level 14. Now, I have no shot of beating this guy at my current level in combat strength of 1. Normally this is where you would have to see if anyone wanted to offer some help. But since the start of the game, no one has enough here to really defeat this thing. So that leaves you with two options, really. I can use my instant, I can use one of my one shots to, to end this combat, or I can try to run away and avoid the bad stuff. If I were to run away, I'd need to roll a five or a six on this die, and if I don't, then I suffer the bad stuff, which in this case is unspeakably awful death for anyone but a wizard. I really don't want to risk that. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use my instant wall and just automatically escape this. So nothing bad happens to me. And because I had to run away, that ends my turn. So now it goes to Billy, who will also kick down the door. He got hit with a curse. <clears throat> so I'm a boy now. So now, Billy has changed sex, and on his next combat, he gets minus five because he's a little distracted by this sudden change. Now, if Billy had a wishing ring, he could stop this curse. Or if I felt magnanimous, magnanimous enough to, to do it, but I don't. <clears throat> so, now here's an interesting thing. I, so I can't play, I can't fight a monster, so I'm not gonna level up. No, so he didn't encounter a monster on, on his first... So I can do one of two things here. I can take a monster from my hand... Which is known as looking for trouble. And see if I can beat it. Or he could take the top door of the door cart, or the door pile, and which just, is known as looting the room. So just, I can go in the room and steal. So what I'm going to do, just for the sake of, of the demonstration, I'm going to fight a level 2 angry chicken. Now, I am a dwarf. I have plus 1 for spiky knees. And my level is one, so that puts me at two, right? So I'm tied with the chicken. You're right tied now. with it. And unless you're a warrior, you lose ties. You are currently <clears throat> losing. So right now, what I can do is ask Eric for help. <clears throat> it's the beginning of the game, so it may behoove him to help me. Because I may return the favor on his next turn. He may. He's a level one. I'm a level one, but I've got a plus one. Together, we're a three, so we would just barely beat the large angry chicken. However... For my health and, and risk in this combat, I would like that one treasure. And this is where the negotiation part takes place. And you know what? You can have the one treasure. You'll still get the level. And you can't share levels. Nope. So, so. we're going to go ahead and we beat the chicken. Since he got help defeating the monster, everyone at the table gets to see what the treasure was. The potion of halitosis, which automatically kills the floating nose. If you've ever seen me after Margarita Night, I've got that developed naturally. So I level up, and I also have this card, Mutilate the Bodies. It's a it allows me, after combat, to take another level, which is also why I asked for help. Right. So now, back to Eric. We're going to do one more turn on this. So. I encounter a level 14 insurance salesman, of which its ability is, my level does not count in this combat. <laughs> I can only fight him with my bonuses, of which I have none. And I've got not enough to help him with. I could throw another monster at him, but I don't have enough of anything else. 
So what I'm going to do is play another card out of my hand, which I did not mention earlier, which is out to lunch. The monster's on break in this room, and I get to draw two cards immediately from the treasure deck. Which, the rapier of unfairness is kind of unfair to me right now because, again, it is an elf only item, and I'm a dwarf. But now I have the fancy buckler of swashing, which takes one hand to use. So, since because you didn't fight the monster, because you... I did not defeat the monster, I do not get a level, I'm still level one. Yeah, so now would be my turn in theory. So yes. I would take. It is now back to you. Oh, I drew Illusion. So I can take that card and place it in my hand. Yes. And I didn't get a monster. I didn't fight anybody. I don't have anything I can fight or that it'd be wise to fight. So I could just loot the room. So I take a card, take it into my hand, and oh, I drew a monster. That'll come in handy later. Mm -hmm. And that's turn two for me. Yeah. So that's Munchkin, guys. This will be released uh, January. January. So why don't you give us a rundown of the artists that are going to be uh... <clears throat> the artists that will be featured throughout next year for Munchkin's fifteenth anniversary are Ian McGinty, Lee Peralta, Art Balthazar, John Kavalik, Katie Cook, Greg Highland, and Edward Huang. And so look out for these guys. This is going to be a great addition to your Munchkin collection. This is going to be great fun to add to the tabletop gaming experience. Um, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you, Eric, for showing this and sharing this with us. And thank you for helping me shoot a video, which I've never done before. So to close, guys, it is December 3rd. Christmas is around the corner. Hanukkah's around the corner. Kwanzaa is soon. So Merry Christmas. Joy is Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy holidays, whatever you celebrate, enjoy it, be safe, and as always, happy gaming and may the dice roll in your favor.